thank you so much and welcome everyone to the IND in a CTD, ECTD format. Just a little bit about me before we get started. I have spent the last seven years as a medical writer in both the pharmaceutical and medical device industries, and I've worked on several commercial INDs where I've written investigators' brochures, clinical trial protocols, and various of the Module 2 documents supporting those INDs. The learning objectives for today, one, we are going to describe the common technical document as a whole, so how and why it came into existence and what actually goes into a common technical document. So regardless of whether that's an IND or an NDA or an MAA, basically all of the kind of granular structure within the CTD. We'll also describe the electronic CTD and basic tools for eCTD implementation. We'll talk about style guides and the importance of those for eCTD implementation. And then we'll map the contents of the traditional IND to the CTD format. So first off, why the common technical document? You can imagine as global regulatory submissions have been becoming more global in nature, there's a need to standardize the format for those. So basically the CTD was designed to produce a single set of technical requirements for the registration of new drug products. This one streamlines the development process. So it basically allows sponsor companies to submit in various regions very quickly because you can develop kind of one overall submission and then submit submit to multiple regions versus creating a separate submission for each region. So the idea is really to get drugs to patients who need them most faster. And this is done by reducing industry preparation time for global submissions. It also provides more consistent reviews across the globe, and it facilitates the electronic submission process. The CTD came into existence from the ICH. So this was an organization that was developed in 1990. It is composed of regulatory authorities from the EU, Japan, and the U.S., along with experts in the pharmaceutical industry in all regions. And at this point, most countries actually follow ICH. And reference one that was provided, you can actually see a list of countries that follow ICH GCP guidelines. And you can see this is a huge list of countries. So this has really been adopted as the standard at this point in the drug development process. So just a little bit about the CTD as a whole. So the CTD is a very modular format. It's very well organized and it's broken down into subsection within subsection. It's an inflexible structure, which basically means it's standardized. And that was the whole purpose of the CTD is to have this standardized kind of system for doing drug applications. One thing to keep in mind is that the CTD applies to format only. So what actually goes into your CTD will depend on whether it's an IND or it's a marketing application, whether that's an NDA, BLA, or MAA. So basically, the names and the location of the information is what changes. But you still need to follow all of the regulations that are associated with the specific information that should be provided. So basically, you can look up any of the kind of subsections of the CTD, and you'll find guidance documents that apply for each of those subsections that will give you more detail on the content. The CTD, again, was developed by the EMA, FDA, and MHLW from Japan, and it's maintained by the ICH. This is the required format in the US, EU, Japan, Canada, and Australia, and again, the whole purpose of the CTD is that it's designed to allow for all documents to be submitted globally and over the life cycle of a submission. It allows for initial versions of documents and then amended versions of documents as you progress in your drug development process. So one thing to really keep in mind as we start talking through the different pieces and components of the CTD is that for an initial IND where you don't yet have clinical data, only certain sections of the CTD will actually be used.